Good morning and welcome back to The Crafty Author. My name is Anissa. I am The Crafty Author and welcome to my quilting slash crafting room. So I'm excited because today I'm going to show you how to make a table topper um, using the design that we did for the block of the month. Um, so there's that. Also, if you notice, I have my awesome keep on crafting the crafty author sweatshirt on today. I went ahead and uh, got one of these from my merchandise store that I have. If you're interested in getting something like this or one of these cool coffee mugs, they are available. So if you look below the description box on this video, you will be able to find that. There's there's two designs for the coffee mugs and there's two designs for the sweatshirts and the t-shirts. Um, so if you're interested in any of that apparel, great. If not, great. All right, so this is what it looks like when I first cut my strips out. I've had a lot of questions about this and so I'm just gonna go ahead and show this to you. I have about uh, 16 inches is what I've cut for each one of these. Okay. So, and this one is just slightly a little bit shorter, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to square these up. And typically what I would do is I would do them. We're going to go ahead and do it. So I would just put this, I ironed them out first. I did press them and then I'm going to put them right sides facing each other. This is so it will make it much easier for me when I'm done cutting them. They'll be even. They'll be the same size. And I will be able to, um, let me try and stay here. I'll just be able to take them over to the sewing machine and just sew them down. Now, I'm going to be able to cut this part off, but... I want to show you this part first. So I will be making two of these. So um, I'm actually going to, I'm gonna fold my fabric in half. It's easier for me to work with fabric this way. You do not have to do this. I find this to be easier for me and it's just, it's a trick that I learned a long time ago, and um, I like it. So that's what I'm gonna I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna fold it in half so that it'll fit, and then I'm going to take my ruler. Now I was asked, how do I get my squares even? So first of all, I'm gonna go ahead and square up all this fabric, and make it much easier for me to work with. So I just find I line up on a line on my ruler or on my cutting mat right here. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut about an inch off of here. And I'm just using my lines to line up my ruler on. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. Now I don't have to be really careful on this piece because I cut it large enough that I know what I'm doing. So I'm just lined up with my the edge of my ruler right here on the 12 and I'm making sure that I'm lined up on the 12 here as well. That keeps it straight. Okay, now I'm going to cut oh, about an inch off of here as well. And like I said, I'm just getting my fabric ready so that I can really cut my pieces, okay? All right, so now I'm going to unfold this. Remember, right sides together, right? And now they are all squared up and cut nice. So now I can move this over. I'm gonna line this edge up on the 13 inch line here on my mat. This one is lined up on the 23 inch line. I'm gonna go ahead and 
square this one up because it did move just a little bit. And that will happen, but you want to get the bulk of it even. And yes, I am wasting fabric here. So you know what? Um, but I am going to do this just for, so that it stays even. Normally, I wouldn't do this. I would cut it at the quarter mark and I'm not going to get into that today. We're going to go this way. All right. Just trust me. So now I'm going to cut seven inches because I want a seven inch block or seven inch square. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Puts it on that 15 inch line. Going to line this up on the 15. My mat moved. Interesting. Okay. Hold it down. I'm going to do another cut. Okay. I'm going to put that strip off to the side. Then I'm going to take this and I am going to spin my fabric and I'm going to line it up on the lines on my mat. So the bottom should be lined up perfectly on the bottom of this line here. You should have your other line lined up perfectly over here on the side and your top should be lined up as well. I'm gonna count seven over and then I'm going to cut. There's one. another one okay now that will make one block so it's gonna make one of these okay so you need two to make one block but since we're making a larger block and we're going to make a design, we need to cut. Okay, at this point, you should have two blocks that look like this. Okay, just like what we did for block of the month for January, same concept. You're just going to sew the two squares together. Okay, so you should have the two, two pieces at this point, two blocks to look just identical, okay? So now what you want to do is you want to take your long ruler. Oh, sorry guys, I hit that with my uh, ruler. And you're going to make a diagonal cut this way and a diagonal cut this way. So you're going to go from corner to corner. If you have a rotating mat, this is great, but, and I do, but um, my rotating mat is only 10 inches big and this is too big for it. So it would be a little challenging to cut using that. You wanna be careful when you pick up your ruler because you don't wanna make all your pieces go flying everywhere. You don't really want to move them. You want to try and be as careful as you can, all right? And I should have closed this, and I did not. Never leave your rotary cutter open. Just slice your fingers up. I don't know why I keep leaving that open. Okay, so now I have these pieces cut. So you should have something that looks like this, okay? So I'm going to take these, and I'm just going to move them up in the corner real quick while I cut this other one. So just in case you missed it, we're going diagonal corner to corner with a ruler. on it. I keep forgetting to close that. Okay, that's done. All right, so now I've got this one that's done as well. Okay, so I've gone and configured 
the first row that I'm going to do. So I'm going to take, this is the same block, and I'm going to take two and just match them up. And you can see that it is now making this little bow tie pattern. Looks like an hourglass or a bow tie. It's really cute. And then this one, I have it going in the opposite direction. So you can see this one is horizontal and this one is vertical. Now I'm gonna take my next one and I am going to do the same thing. I'm going to match this up with another piece that's opposite, like so. Only I'm gonna flip this one vertical So you can see, boom, and this one will be horizontal. So it's exactly the opposite of that. So you're just taking the two different pieces. So you, you should have, in my case, I would have a polka dot and this pink wavy and then a polka dot over here that lines up with the pink wavy and the pink wavy with this polka dot. So opposites, okay? And that's what you will have. And I want to make sure I'm doing this right. And I am. And now I have this block. And as you can see, it is now making this pinwheel design on top of it. This is just using a four patch. Okay. So now what I need to do is I need to go to the sewing machine and I need to sew these two pieces together. These two pieces together. These two pieces together. Okay. Okay. And then I will attach them. I will sew a quarter of an inch here to attach these two blocks, a quarter of an inch here to attach these two, and then I'll sew it together here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and then I'll be back when I'm finished to show you what it looks like. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and take one of my triangles here, and I have my seam, one seam going this way and one seam going the opposite way. So now I'm going to bud these up. I just take them and bud them up like so, okay? And then I'm going to straighten out my fabric here. Just make sure that I'm nice and lined up, nice and even. And I'm going to start sewing. Now, if you need a lead to start that off, you are more than welcome to use one. I have one. I haven't needed it yet. Probably spoke too soon, but I didn't need it for this. And so, okay. I'm just going to finger press my seam that way. And then I'm going to sew this one. All right, so I've gone and pressed these now that they're sewn together, and now I need to sew the actual blocks together. So that's what I'm going to be doing here. And um, I am just going to line it up. I'm going to take the next one that I have and I am also going to put that one up and I shouldn't say butt it up nest the seams together I call it butting them up that's just what I call it you may call it the proper term or something different when I'm sewing I have my own language You don't understand something that I say, please ask. <laughs> okay. 
So now I've got these two that are done and I am going to change out my bobbin because I just ran out. These types of projects, I really, really like to use um, stuff like leftover bobbins that I have because I don't care really if the thread matches, especially if it's going like on my table, um, which this is. So I'm not overly worried about it. If I was making this for someone, I, I would be concerned, but I'm not. Um, but I like to use up bobbins that I have. So... Now I'm going to take my top piece. Now I'm gonna take this piece that we've just sewn together and I'm going to finger press it to my right side. And then I'm going to take the bottom piece that we just put on and I'm gonna make sure that everything is lining up right before I go and sew this together and it is. And so this block is horizontal, this block is vertical, this one is vertical, this one is horizontal. Everything is exactly as it's supposed to be. So I'm going to press this bottom seam to the left, which is the opposite of what I did to the top. And you want it to do that so that it will nest. Now I am going to take my top, I'm not going to trim this little thread that's in between. I'm just going to take them and fold them over. And I am just going to let those two seams nest together. And they will do that because of the way that we sewed them together without cutting that uh, little string up there. So I got them to lock. You can use a pin or you don't have to. You can use a quilt clip. I'm gonna just pin it just cause I can. Um, I don't normally do that, but sorry, trying to get this straightened out in case you're wondering why my hand is in the air. All right, so now I'm just going to take it over and I'm going to sew quarter of an inch along here. Coming up to that seam, I'm just gonna pull out that little pin. I'm gonna check and make sure that everything looks good and lined up. And it was not 100% right, so I'm fix that. Make sure I caught everything, looks good this up and then I finger press it make sure that everything looks like it's on point and it is I'm gonna go press this and then we're gonna talk about what's next all right well this just turned out absolutely amazing and after seeing it done and put together it has changed my mind as to what I'm going to do with this Originally, I wanted to um, put borders around this, but now that I'm looking at it, it is so pretty on its own. I think that putting a border around it will ruin it, and I will show you what I'm talking about. It does something. It takes away from it. You see that? It takes away from it. I just, I, I like it the way that it is. Okay, I really, really like it the way that it is. This is what it would look like with a lighter border around it, um, which that makes it look nice. I think that makes it really pop out. But like I said, I think I'm going to leave it alone. I think I'm just going to put some batting in on it, put a backing, and I'm just going to quilt it. And then, um, and then I'm going to bind it. And I'm just going to leave it alone because sometimes less is more. And in this case, I feel like less is more. And so um, what I wanted to say, though, is there are different things that you can do with a four patch. As you can see, this is a simple four patch block that, you know, looks like it's just plain at first. And then when you start 
cutting it and doing different variations with the, with it, you see what you can come up with, right? So it's it's really quite beautiful. So I am going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and back this, put the batting in it. I'm going to quilt it. Okay, I just wanted to show you, I'm just doing some straight line quilting. I've got a walking foot on and that is how I am quilting this. So it doesn't have to be anything fancy. I did have a question on my live video um, if I use quilting gloves. The answer is yes, but I typically use them, it depends on the project. Um, I use them definitely on a bigger quilt. Um, and if I'm not straight lining, if I'm doing like free motion, like an actual design design, then yes, I do use them because it does help to keep the uh, fabric um, nice and steady. So, so yes, I do. Um, this one, I'm just kind of straight lining it along the along the pinwheels and the squares. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna finish this up and then I will come back and show you what it looks like. And I just wanted to show you that you can straight line quilt this. It doesn't have to be anything fancy and it is going to look fantastic. All right, I have finished our project. So I'm excited to show it to you because it's, amazing really really amazing i love the way this turned out you guys check it out so you can see the uh hourglass bow tie um print in that and then you can also see the pinwheel in the center it is awesome this is what the back of it looks like you can see where I did all my straight line quilting, right? It looks phenomenal. And then I just I used a zigzag stitch to put my uh, binding on it. Okay, two and a half inch uh, binding is what I used. I, used. I cut a two and a half inch strip and then I ironed it in half. And then I put it on here. And that is what we have. So this, I'm going to put this on my kitchen table and then I'll put my pretty little flowers that go right in the center on that. Um, but uh, when I was making this, I was thinking not only would this make a gorgeous quilt, but um, it would also make like a really neat pillow. So if you wanted to make a pillow for your couch or I don't know, your bedroom set or just for anything. I think it's a really, really, really cool, cool pattern. That is what you can make from a four patch. There are other variations of designs that you can do from a four patch. This is just one of the many and I love it. And I hope that you love it too. One more time. Pretty, just gorgeous. Okay, and I love these colors. I'm glad we kept this simple. Really, really simple. Um, so that is, that is it. So if you would like to follow me on social media, links are down below in the description box. I am putting all of my information on the block of the month onto my blog at craftyauthor.com. Um, so if you wanna know measurements and that sort of thing, that's where you wanna head over to check it out just click on the little uh menu item that says blog and you'll see all the items that i have on my blog there you can also watch all my videos on my website as well so you just click on the tag that says videos and it'll take you there um so there is that um i am an amazon affiliate a cricket affiliate dollar tree affiliate and an AccuQuilt affiliate member. So if you purchase through any of my links down below, I will make a small commission. I do need to say that. And that is it for me today. Keep on crafting. Don't forget to like and subscribe this video. Feel free to share it if you would like. And I will see you guys next time on The Crafty Author.
Bye-bye.